The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem, and this episode is all about microcontrollers and sensors. Very cool, pretty new ones. Infineon has sent me their new range of maker-targeted Arduino-compatible boards, shields, and sensors. What I do today is a little foray into the world of professional engineers, because sometimes they have to build demo units and demo models for trade shows. There are three things I have to deal with for this project. First is the products that I want to showcase, then the space that I have at the booth, and of course the theme, and the theme today is a sustainable future. I have limited space for this project, so 25 by 25 centimeters is the maximum, and I want to fit two demos in there. One shows off smart street lights that sense an incoming car and turn the lights on and off, depending on the location. And the other one is a smart charging station that knows when a car is near and can also indicate how to find the perfect spot for inductive charging. When thinking of smart city of the future, I think electric cars. And electric cars can be easily sensed with magnetic sensors because the electric motors have magnets in them and also they emit an electromagnetic field when they are running. So we can sense an incoming electric car. This one is the TLV TLV493D magnetic sensor. That's a three-dimensional magnetic sensor as opposed to a regular Hall effect sensor. So I can not only measure how far something is away with that, but also where it is in space. Because I have a limited space, I have to do that at a model scale. So first I want to find out which one is the perfect magnet to sense in this range of motion that I have, 25 by 25 centimeters. So I used the example sketch that was provided with the sensors to see how different magnets behave and how I can track that data. A lot of people are talking about charging cars while they are stuck in traffic or waiting at stoplights or while they are parking without having to plug them in. So usually you would think of inductive charging. But there is a catch with that. If you don't park your car in the perfect spot, you have a lot of losses with wireless power transmission. So what we need to do is make sure that everybody parks at the perfect spot. So my first demo uses LEDs to indicate if a car has reached the perfect spot, send them out to the network, these informations know when a car comes near to be ready and then charge it in the most effective way. I will use some LEDs to indicate these points. They will not really charge, but the sensing is real and you can move the car around to see how the system reacts to it when it's not in the perfect spot. With these LEDs, you can find the perfect charging spot. I'm programming this demo on the XMC4700 Relax Kit, which is Arduino compatible and 5V tolerant if you set the jumper. And it also has a lot more I.O. pins that are currently only usable with the Dave environment by Infineon, but I hope they will surely make an Arduino version of that so we can use all of these pins. That might be an option for a future big projects. Of course, we also need the TLV4930D sensor. Let's take a look at this demo's code. This is the sketch for the charging station. First we have to include all the libraries, of course. We get a lot of variables. These LEDs are our output. Some of them are internal, some of them are external. We start the sensor like in the tutorial and we take a reading. So if we have that reading, this code looks very strange. That's because that is based on the sketch that I wrote to getting familiar with all these with all these new microcontrollers and these motor drivers. So what I did was uh, take the big motor driver board that we had, the alternative one, 
that drives two very high power motors and use them for a remote control tank. You can download that code for free and try it out yourself. So this not only does the position determination and puts it out over LEDs, it would also drive motors according to them. So if we take our reading and we have a little dead zone in here, so the dead zone is determined by this variable, that is basically the diameter of our magnet. So if the magnet is right on top, we wouldn't know if it's left, right or up, down. We set a little dead zone so we have some wiggle room. And if it's more than that wiggle room, we know that it's on one of the sides of the sensor. So we can track the position of any magnet relative to the sensor. So if it's to the right of the sensor, you would turn right. If it's on the left, you would turn left. If it's straight ahead, you would go straight ahead. And if it's backwards, you would go backwards. So you have a magnetic joystick that controls an RC tank <laughs> built in there and also combination movements. So that was pretty intricate code and it works great as a remote control, but I didn't manage to finish all the RF parts, but feel free to use that code. What we do in this example, we use these measurements to form a serial output. So we keep track of all the variables and then we use that output to determine if there is a vehicle in the charging dock and we display vehicle is charging and we also write to the LEDs so we have a visual indication of where if we are to the left to the right to the front or to the back of the perfect spot so if a driver comes near it according to these LEDs or a serial output meaning a simulated network output, the driver of a car would be able to determine if he's in the perfect spot for his car to be charged. And we can put the, the charging current in accordance to that spot so we won't charge at full current when the car is not in the perfect spot so we won't waste any power. It's just for optimizing energy consumption. And if the charging dock is free, it would also display its locations. So if that would be attached, attached to a network, you would know, hey, in the Infineon Maker Corner, there is a charging spot free for me. Hey, hey, smart city. I'm Karen Corbeil, host of The Learning Circuit, a show where we learn about electronic components and concepts, then apply what we learn by building projects. Look for new episodes of The Learning Circuit on Wednesdays and connect with me on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning! The second demo is about smart city lights. You could save a lot of power when the lights are not turned on all the time, only when they are needed. So. My sensor should sense an incoming car and turn off the street lights that are closest to it. And when it's parked, it's turning them on in full brightness to assist the driver with loading and unloading the car. And when the car is gone, they should also shut down. So no energy is wasted. And for that, we're using the XMC 4700 microcontroller as before and the DC motor shield with the TLE 94112EL, which is an SBI controlled motor driver that can drive a lot of motors and in our case LEDs. I'm cutting up an LED strip in sections of three LEDs. These use 12 volts so I'm able to use the motor shield directly with my microcontroller just to apply 12 volts to it and that lets me power high powered LEDs or motors or whatever you would like to connect to it that uses a PWM signal or just needs a lot of power. I also tried out the little XMC to go kit with the magnetic sensor, but I couldn't get that to work for some reason. It seems the SDA port needs some kind of setup that I don't know how to do. So I got curious and cut off the sensor from the XMC to go kit and used that on the other microcontroller board. And it works perfectly, so that's really exactly the same sensor. You could use them bare bones, so they are so tiny and crazy easy to use. 
This is my sketch for the smart light side of the demo. First we have to include all the libraries that we need. Of course we need the magnetic sensor library and also the TLE 94112 library that's for the motor driver. We start instances of these motors but I call them LED because what I do is I use them as LED drivers. We have some variables, we start the magnetic sensor that's basically copy pasted from the examples and we also have to initialize the motor controller. Then we connect our LEDs, so that section is used to set it up. We can decide high side and low side, we can basically freely choose the outputs of the DLE chip. So this is also able to reverse the voltage so we can run motors backwards. In this case we will leave the high sides and low sides where they are. I have chosen pin 2 and 1 and that goes in along these numbers for all the other ones. We choose to drive it with PWM so we use one of the three PWM drivers to set that specific LED and we also set the frequency to 100 Hz and then we repeat the same procedure for all the other LEDs. So we have that four times and it's always connected to different pins. We have to initialize them and this is a startup sequence just for fun and just to see if all the LEDs are working. Then we have to measure our magnetic sensor and Here's an if statement that controls if we do anything because if this statement is, oh, I've, <laughs> I've deleted something in the file, it's here, it's just an else function that tells all these LEDs to shut off when there is no car present. But if there is a car present, meaning the measurement is not zero, we use our measurements to determine how far they are away. So. If it's in that range, we set these two LEDs to half, then we put out cars detected such and such meters away from our parking spot. If it's in that range, we engage more of the LEDs. I seem to mess up the code pretty easily. Then if it's right at the parking spot, we set them all to maximum and say, hey, there's a car parked. Seems like everything is working, needs a little bit of tweaking I think, but now I'm constructing a case for that that fits my size frame 25 by 25 centimeters and looks a little bit like a model city. I designed this in Fusion 360 and used my 3D printer and the laser cutter to do the case. You can find all these files at the link in the description. This project is for a professional environment, so I need to make it a little bit more neat and tidy. So I 3D printed a cover to cover up my wiring crimes. And I also need to make some labels so people at the trade show know what they are looking at. That looks like a finished demo. Let's try it out. Okay, this is my smart city model. Let's boot up the parking space. And here we have a tiny toy car. And when this comes near the sensor, whoop, it lights up according to how near it is. So this is max brightness and it also indicates over the network how far the car is away and if there is a free parking space. So it only switches on the lights when a car is present. There's also a state somewhere here. It can't really decide if it should turn on or off the lights. This is like a warning state, <laughs> an unintentional one. Let's hook up the other demo. And here is the charging demo. This is a charge indicator. This is the area where you want to be for charging. These LEDs show you if you're off. So if you don't have the perfect spots, these will guide you. And this LED shows you that charging is in progress. So if a car comes near it from like the parking spot and comes over there, you can see at the LEDs, 
that we're a little bit off to the side. And depending on the combination of these two LEDs, it shows us where we have to be. And when we're at the correct spot, this LED pulses, so we know now it's charging. When we hit the perfect spot, it will do it at max frequency. And if we are not at the perfect spot, it will be a little bit less. So you won't waste any power. And on the network, it shows you that the vehicle is charging or if it goes away, that the vehicle charging place is free. So you could also get messages if there is a charging spot available or if there's a parking spot available. And that would make for a smarter city. At least I hope. My tiny smart city model turned out pretty cool. It fits all the requirements and it shows off how edge devices and sensors can make a sustainable future. I gotta go, another project is waiting for me.